Uh-huh, I sure will. Uh, good morning, everybody. Y'all listening to The Voice. Uh, come on, dig me now. One and only Steve Harvey got a radio show. Today, uh, I, w- I want to just uh, share uh, something with you um, along your way um, to wherever it is you're trying to get to. You know, um, every, everybody has a different definition for success. And I'm not I'm not here to tell you what yours should be. I mean, please pursue whatever you think success is. Aim as high as you can, though. Uh, that's for sure. My father used to say all the time, I'm sure you all have heard it in different variations, but he used to always say, aim for the moon. Just in case you miss, you'll still be amongst the stars. He'd say that to me all the time. So that always was in me to aim high. Now, He wasn't saying aim with the intent to miss. He was just saying aim. In case you miss, you'll still be amongst the stars. If you aim for the moon. But if you just aim for that first floor window and you miss it, you know, usually run into some type of wall and and nothing happens. You slither down. You know, in my book, uh, Act Like a Lady, Think Like a Man, I told uh, people that men love three ways. They profess, they provide, they protect. And that's the core essence of a man's love. Well, there's some other P's in life, too. The number one thing you have to understand about trying to be successful, and I guess I call this the four P's. I may come up with five along the way. I don't know. I'm just talking as it's given to me, so. I'm going to start by saying that these are the four P's of uh, success that you have to get ready for. Number one is pressure. A lot of it is applied by the circumstance of what you're trying to go for and what you're trying to do. But a lot of it also is self-imposed pressure. It's, It's what you put on yourself to make it. It's, it's a sense of urgency it's it's a sense of necessity. But pressure is the first thing I want you to be ready for. And pressure comes in a lot of different forms, but it's gonna be pressure. There's an old saying that pressure busts a pipe. See, that's why most people turn around, because of the pressure of trying to be successful. I want you to get it in your mind that it is going to be a pressurized situation on your rise to the top. Pressure. But understand that that is what it is, is not going to change. That's it. Prepare yourself. Get ready for there to be 
pressure. The second thing I want you to understand is when you receive this pressure, you have to persist. You got to stay at it. You got to develop a doggedness. <laughs> there's, a, <laughs> there's a song out that says, why must I feel like that? Why must I chase the cat? Nothing but the dog in me. That's a funny line in that song because really I was thinking about it one day. I was humming it and and, and, it, and it occurred to me. I said, why must I feel like that? Why must I chase the cat? Nothing but the dog in me. And you know, now you could take it in the literal sense that a cat chases the dog because it's innately it's in his spirit that cats and dogs are a lot of times enemies. Now people have pets and have proven that if you show love on both sides, they can exist. And that happens too. But naturally, innately, when your cat goes by a dog and your dog don't recognize him, there's some barking going on. I'm talking about just walking through the neighborhood or something. So, but the reason that this dog is so persistent towards this cat is just cause it's in him. It's innately in him. And what I'm saying to you, just using that as an analogy, is that you got to be, you got to be persistent in that you got to develop some dog in you now because pressure takes some fighting back. See, if you don't fight back against pressure, pressure busts a pipe. So what you think it'll do to you? Pressure crack walls. Pressure causes explosions. So if you don't fight back to hold it in, you understand? Pressure does most people in. The simple thing called pressure. The, the weight of what it feels like to want to be successful every single day over and over and over and over and over. It's just too much pressure. People crack. You got to persist. You have to persist. You can, the thought of giving up can come, but you got to get it out. You got to persist. The next thing I want you to think about is another something that I've been thinking about for years and learned for years. It's called perseverance. To persist means to 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 insist. The key word in insist in persist is insist. You must you must insist that this is going to happen. Now the the persist I'm assuming means it's a proaction. It's some type of proaction that you go towards it to make it. You know persist. You got to be persistent. You got to be constantly at it. You're insisting that it happens. You got to be constantly at it. But the next thing I want you to remember is perseverance. Perseverance is important. Perseverance means that when you've done your best, when you've persisted, when you're fighting back against the pressure, perseverance simply means I'm going to hang in here. If if a crack come in the pipe, I'm going to hang in there. If the pipe bust, I'm going to keep going. If I got to put duct tape, mud, whatever I got to put on this thing, man, I'm going to use perseverance. I'm going to stay with it no matter what. So we looking at the three things again. You got to understand that it's going to be pressure, that you're going to have to persist. Key word in persist is insist. You have to insist that no matter what the pressure is, I'm going to stay with it. But then perseverance, if it goes wrong, man, you got to get in there and keep fighting but then, Lord have mercy, nothing helps you handle the three P's better than the fourth P. You got to pray. You got to use prayer. You got to talk to God. You got to use faith. You got to have some conferences with him late at night, early in the morning, in the middle of the afternoon, when you're on the train, when you're driving. You got to talk to God, man. You got to get yourself some help along the way. Nothing is bigger than prayer. There is nothing bigger than prayer. Prayer will help you overcome the pressure. Prayer will help you stay persistent. And Lord have mercy, prayer will help you persevere. Them is the four Ps. That just came to me today. God gave that to me. I'm passing it on. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 
All right, everybody. It's 5, 10, 15, 20, 25, 30. I see you, Shirley Strawberry. I see you over there hiding. I see you, Shirley Strawberry. I see you. I see you, Carla Pharrell. I see you over there, Carla Pharrell. I see you. I see you, Junior. I see you, Junior. I see you, King of Pranks. I see all of y'all. Y'all can't hide from me. It's the Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. Ready to bring you some joy. What's up, everybody? What's going on, y'all? Jay, what's Did happening? Did I take it back? Good. Did I take Boy. it back? I t- Boy. <laughs> Be on that tree. Eyes tucked in your elbow. <laughs> 5, 10, 15, 20, 20, 20 25, 30, 30, 35, 30, 40. 40, 40. <laughs> but I love to play hide and go seek at night with boys. I loved oh, it when I was little. Oh, I did. Yes. I did. Yes. Not, right, not yes. all boys, but yes. I just loved I did. Oh, my God. Uh, go I was so boy, boy crazy when I was young, now, but I really Shirley, did. Did huh? you play hide and go seek or hide and go get it? Go get that's it. Seek. Uh, seek. My mother was upstairs. Uchi, okay. Uchi, Uchi. <laughs> <laughs> seek. But, it was, yeah, that was fun. That yeah. was fun. You see, these kids don't know. We made up games. Yeah. We had no toys. We had no yeah. toys. Oh, Red yeah. light, green light. Oh, what? Yeah. What? <laughs> Hopscotch. One, bot- one uh-huh. potato, two potato. Yes. What? <laughs> it's go just play you it. Yeah. Tosh and them, they do play it. Oh, they play it? They really? Play it. I, I haven't heard uh-huh. any kids it's playing a, that in a, a long time. Yeah, what about Switch Man? They do. What's that? I'm not familiar with Somebody switch get man. a Switch and they just beat the hell out of whoever they get close See, that's to. Wrong. <laughs> that's <just> wrong. What? <laughs> my, my, my mama was yeah, king of that game. that at home. It was a game. <laughs> my mama it was a killed game that game. Called Switch Man. I never heard that. Yes, well, in the country we played it, yes. In the- <laughs> Did you all have Mother May I? Yeah. Mother yeah. May I. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved Mother, Mother May, May I. Yeah. Oh, yeah. I loved Mother May I. We had Mama Don't Catch Me Off That Wood. <laughs> just, I don't know what that's, that is. You sitting on the front porch and you can't uh-huh. get caught off that porch. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. So it wasn't a real game, it was a threat. Yeah. Okay. Red Basically, light, green light. Yeah, I love red light, light, green light. Yeah. Did you all have Rock Teacher? Nobody had Rock Teacher, right? Yes. You had Rock mm-hmm. Teacher? Yeah, we played Rock Teacher. How about this game right here? My mama not home. If you come on over, we can have a party. How about that game? Remember that game? <laughs> that was no game. That was I didn't. Yeah. <laughs> they play that game. Yeah, that we, game. but we played house and stuff like that yeah. with our cousins. Yeah, yeah. yeah. We yeah. love to play funeral. We love to play funeral. I did not want to play funeral. <laughs> oh, I loved funeral because <laughs> we took turns being the dead body. You all. <laughs> I just wanted to be the preacher, but I was going yes, to be the preacher. And the point was not to make the dead body laugh. You could <laughs> If the dead body laughed, it was out, and somebody else got to be the dead body. That was fun. What, is it, what was the best place to hide when you played high go? When nobody could oh. find you. Yeah. <laughs> if, if you hid in them sticker bushes, trust me, yes. they wasn't coming in there. Oh, my God. The sticker oh, yeah. bushes. Did y'all, uh-uh. did, y'all, did y'all ever have yeah. one person count, and then everybody go home and leave his ass out there? <laughs> oh, so mean. You know what, man? I wouldn't play with you, man. I really would. That's so mean. Remember what he does on Halloween? Yeah. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Cuts right. all the lights out. All right, listen. Um, coming up at 32 after the hour, guys, uh, we're going to talk about summer vacations inside of something funny right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Take a vacation at the International Space Station, guys. NASA has been working on a program that will allow tourists to live at the International Space Station for up to a month at a time. If they pull, yeah, a whole month, right? Uh, If they pull this off, commercial companies will be able to lease time up there and bring people aboard, even if they don't have any educational or scientific reason to go. Uh, of course. Oh, you just going. I know. So you're just going, right, for hey. a month? Hey, man. Hey. Yeah. And hey. float? Yeah. But here's the catch. Here, here, Here's the catch. You know it's going yeah. to be a catch. Uh, it will not be cheap, people. A no, sing- this six a- figures. <laughs> yes, you're right, Tommy. A single trip will end up costing over $50 million. $50 million. Oh, oh, that's going to that's gonna cut out okay. a lot of common wow. people. Yeah. But, let's, but, let's, but, but Can we send Trump, though? But, <laughs> I will say this. I will more say than this, a month. Jay. I will say this. Not if my cousin get up there first. It's going to be some deals cut. I'm telling you. You're going to be up at the space station. You ain't going to believe how much it's going to cost. If he get up there first, uh-huh. 
He gonna hack the uh, All doubt. Hook All doubt. Come in through the back and come through China's part. <laughs> I love it, oh. Junior. <laughs> I'm gonna be up there all day, all day, all day long. I would, like, I would like to. What what daring would you like to do, Shirley? Something daring that you just. You know, I I like, used to want it when bungee jumping was popular. I yeah. wanted to bungee jump. Mm. I, I never did that. And then uh-huh. when the um, you know, when you fall out of the plane, when you jump out of the Sky plane, skydiving. Sky yeah, I, I want. I, I'm I'm on the fence about it now. I I yeah. kind of still yeah. want to do it. The adventurous in me. Uh-huh. Uh, somebody's telling me to do it. <laughs> really? Yeah. Somebody like who? Somebody, <laughs> Somebody see, like I'm our not, engineer is like, he's done you, it, like, it's if cool. You, if you go to Six Flags, I'm not scared of any ride except that ride that spins you around. That's the oh, only yeah. one where you stand up against oh, the wall. Oh, yeah, you stick the to the wall. Oh, and yeah. they drop the floor from under you? They drop the floor. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I can't take that ride. Yeah, yeah I don't yeah, like that ride either, Jay. No, I did that with my dad, and he turned and yelled in my face as I was screaming. I've not been back on it since then. I haven't been on my my first roller coaster was Astro World in Houston and I uh-huh. peed uh-huh. all over myself. Oh uh, dog, was it? <laughs> Are you oh, serious? Hold on, team. Yeah, it, was Texas, it, uh, Texas, Texas Cyclone. 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 Yes. What? Oh yeah. Oh. And Grease Lightning. And Grease. Oh, Lightning. I loved all those rides. I wouldn't rides. get on that. Call. Remember that? Remember that ride they had at the fair? It looked like two bullets in the air and it would twist around. I don't know what you call it. Oh yep. yeah, like, yeah, it's, it's Jay. Like the, the salt shaker or something like that, man. I would wow. get on that ride. I'll get on anything. I loved. Like that, I know. I love ride. ride. Yeah. yeah. But you know, you, you know, know what? what was simple that I still won't get on. It, it's what? real simple. That damn Ferris wheel, man. I just don't want to be. <laughs> yeah, like when they letting like somebody okay, off at yeah. the bottom and I'm at yeah. the top. I don't like that. I don't. I don't. <laughs> that's why I don't like it because when they stop, then you're suspended in the air and your yeah. seat is shaking. Yeah. And that's they scary. Like to rock it, the yeah. There. Oh, oh man. Yeah, that's scary. That's no, scary. Well, I'll tell you what I did. Remember we went to Mexico and we zip line? Uh huh. Yeah. yeah. That was fun. That's fun. That was that's fun. fun. Zip line. Mm-hmm. That scared me because Junior and Jay, I thought you could just do it one time uh-huh. and be through, but you have to do the course. Ain't no turning oh, back. It's a course. It's a course. So we had yes. to do it like 12 yeah. times. You had to go to each station and you're zip lining over a Mexican jungle. And I remember this little girl was behind me. She was like maybe eight. And oh, she was yeah. fearless. Remember, I remember that was, girl. <laughs> she was so sick of me, Jay. She was there with her you know, parents. She kept saying, Go, lady. I go. She called you a punk. I think kids make her so sick. <laughs> they do. They yes. look at you like you stupid. Yeah. yeah. Right. I could stand this little girl. I know. She was like, every remember time, her? lady, every time I you're scared. Her. I want to knock her. You, you, just, you just want to say to the kid, look, I'm paying for everything. Your ass riding for free. Shut up, okay? <laughs> but zip lining was really cool once you got the hang of it. You you know, yeah. put, yeah. put your yeah. head forward and your hands back. And don't back. look down. Yeah, don't, mm-hmm. oh, don't look down. Yeah, don't look especially down, if you're I, afraid of heights. Yeah. But yeah. I'm good. I, I don't have to ever do it again in my yeah. life. But it was fun at the time. It was a fun adventure because we had never done that before. Yeah. Yeah, but that was. You know what my next one is? Uh What? A safari. That's my next. Oh, Oh, I've done that. I've done that. You've done a safari, like an African safari? Yeah, we went to Africa and these elephants came out. I I lost my mind, man, because the guy said, do not move. Do not move. I I cried like a white woman. I really did. (laughs) (laughs) I've heard like Steve's been as well, and and he says you got to do that. It's a Mm -hmm. once in a lifetime experience. You'll never experience anything like that. But I I, I don't know. I might. I know what you uh, you should have done. Have you ever been to Chicago and gone up in the the building that has the glass floor and walked out on that glass floor? Have you done that? At the old yes. tower? Yeah, you uh-huh. walk out on the glass and you're like, you're on a big uh-uh. piece of glass. <laughs> Hell no. I no. think got that in No, I never, I never did that. And I was born and raised in Chicago. <laughs> I never I would do that. that. Uh, oh, oh, it's new. Oh, it's new. Yeah. Uh-uh. I thought you were yeah. going to say go out at night on the south side. That's what I thought you were going to say. <laughs> to get a Subway sandwich? Yeah. <laughs> there you go. Uh-uh. 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 Wow. You, you did not have to. You did not. Yeah, that's really scary. Wow. That's really dangerous. Uh-uh. Yeah. Uh-uh. <laughs> no. Oh. No, but wow. fun summers, though. Yeah, we've done yeah. some fun and exciting yeah. things. Yeah, We had some fun mm-hmm. summers. We really, really did. have. And and more to come, you know, God yeah. willing, more to come. Yeah, it's not over. More vacation. Yeah. Did, y'all, did y'all go on vacation in the city that you lived in? 
Mm-hmm. You know, like your mama just took you. Your mama just took you to a hotel in the city. Oh yeah. Oh, no, yeah. we didn't do that. We just went to my nah. grandmother's house, which was around. The that, that was us. That was <laughs> or, us. Yeah, or picnics. It was right. Yeah. There. We used to do picnics a lot, being little. Yeah. Go to the park. Yeah. Yeah. Right to the country. Yeah. We lived in the projects, and we went to the country. Yeah. (laughs) All right. Well, uh, coming up next is Run That Prank Bag with the nephew. Uh, He's in the building. More fun, more laughs right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Coming up at the top of the hour, guys, entertainment news. But first, the nephew in the building with Run That Prank Bag. What you got, Nev? The gift. Why is, is, that, so is that Tommy or Junior? Who is that doing that? Is that Tommy or Junior? I did it the exact same way. You did. He did well, it let, yesterday. Let's hear you do it, How did you do it yesterday? The gift. <laughs> I can't even tell. You can hardly. I did the same way, Pimp. It's like they're the same person. The know, gift. Uh, <laughs> Run it, cat. Hello? Hello, I'm trying to reach Bree. This is Bree. Hey, Bree, how you doing? Listen, we, um, you and I, we've never met. I wanted to reach out to you, though. Did you, um... Did you get um? Did you get a package that I sent to you last week? A package? Who is this? My name uh, My name is Jason. Um, and I sent you a package. Jason, do know. I know you? Do, who, who are you? Say again now. How do I know you? You don't know me. I, I'm I'm just you know like I guess you could say I'm like a secret admirer, and I've been admiring you for quite some time. And I um, you know I I sent you a little something, and uh you know I didn't know if if you got it or not, if I had the right address, but I wanted to know if you had gotten it. So, uh, you know, this is like my first time reaching out to you. You the sent that package to my house? Uh, yeah, I mean, you got you got a pair, a pair of my underwear with the rose petals all in it? You sent, yeah, you the sent drawers to my house. Who the are you? And how do you know me? My, my, I, 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 I've been admiring you for a long time. I, mean, I, see you, I see you at your job. I see you at your house, you know, at the grocery market when I see you. So what you stalker? Well, you, do I know you? We've been... Where do I know you from? You don't know me, you know. You don't know me at all. But you know, I got you know. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. Wait a minute. You you just sent some drawers to my house. Got my husband all all up in an uproar behind Your these damn drawers, and you don't even know me. You got a husband? Yeah, I got a husband. Oh, okay. I didn't. I didn't, I, didn't, I mean, hey, I, I no disrespect, Bree. I ain't, I ain't know you had a husband. You Hell, know. You been watching me, stalking me at my job in my house. You ought to know that. Hey, I, I I apologize on that, but you, so you did get it. I want a f- apology. Yeah, I got them. Okay, I mean, what did you think about the gesture, though? I mean, let me let me explain something to you. My husband got that f- package with my f- name on it, and I've been for the last week going through hell. This f- checking my Facebook, all of my emails, going through my call history on my phone. I I get he wake my f- up in the middle of the night talking about this, f- and you gonna ask me about. Are you crazy? No, I, I, I you know, I, hey, I, I was just admiring you. I thought, you know, sending a pair of my underwear with some, some drawers to my house. I, I, I don't mean, even I know just, you, you know, like that. I don't even know you like that. I mean, you Why don't. don't you I do know, that? I know, but I, you know, that was my way of like showing you that I admire you, that I'm, I'm, I'm into you. You know, that was just. That. That's some sick. I don't need no more drawers. Especially no strange draws. I got draws at the house. I got two sons, a husband. I wash draws every week. I don't need no more draws. You don't do no like that. Upset my whole household. Have me damn near in divorce court behind some draws. What I want to know is how the hell do you know me? How, how do how did you get my address? Where I work? Where I buy? Well, how do you know me? My phone number? All this. How do you know me? I, I, I don't get that. Where did you get my? from. I tell you what, call this number back when my husband gets home, you okay, can deal wait, with him. You can get wait. your drawers back. You come meet him in the morning. I have him there. Come by my job. I'm, I'm not trying to oh, have no, no altercations with nobody. I'm not trying to have all of that. You explain this to him and get this off my because I've had enough of this some drawers at my door. Okay, let me ask you this here. Will you send me some of yours? No, the you did Are you not listening to me? Hell no, you can't have none of my drawers. Why don't you ask my husband for him when he see you in the morning? Why don't you ask him for some of my drawers? I thought I thought it would be, you know, like a sign of something something intimate, something from me, you know, uh, kind of like a token of, uh, of where I wanted the relationship to go. I, 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 I don't didn't... even know you. You got my damn near in divorce court behind some damn drawers, and I don't even know you. Who the 
are you? How, who are you? How do you know so much about me? Where did you get my address from? How do you know where I work? How do you, how you get my phone? Who are you? And you got all this my name information. Jason, it seems like you didn't know, you didn't know that I'm husband. Matter of fact, so, so what now? lock this number in. You can call back on this number in an hour when that is home so we can get this straight. So you can talk to him. Do that for me. Oh. Wait, 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 wait. See, I'm not looking for no altercation. Now, if, it, if, if, if... Oh, you look, you were looking for something, and you still not understand. So, obviously, that's what you want, because I'm trying to explain to you, you didn't upset my whole household, got my ass over here nerved, and you ain't understanding that. So, obviously, what you are looking for is an altercation. No, I'm not looking for... I, I'm looking for... I'm looking for some personal time with you. That's what I'm looking for. My personal time is with my husband. What about that, don't you understand? Will you send me a pair of your underwear? Hey, what? I mean, I mean, what? is that asking too much? If you just send me a pair, I'll go away. I'll send you some all right. Give me your address. Yeah, tell me where to send them. Tell me where to send these drawers right now. Are yeah. you going to send them? What's that? Hell yeah, give me the address. You give me the address. As a matter of fact, I'll hand deliver them right tonight. See, you're trying to create an altercation. Why not just give you a P.O. box? Because, see, you're trying to create an altercation. No, give me your address. You got mine. You got my address. Let me send you some to your address. No, no, that's all right. Look, you know what? Can I, can I say one more thing to you? No, yeah, you know what? I don't want it. What, what, what the do you have to say to me? Can I say one more thing to you, please? What? What do you want? I just want to tell you who I am. Can I tell you who I am? You know it told me who you are. I want to know how to you know me. Where you get my from? Listen to me real closely. This is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You just got pranked by your sister. Oh. <laughs> Hello. What? <laughs> oh, I'm a. Hello. <laughs> what? What the? Oh my goodness. <laughs> Oh, I'm going to get her. Oh, my God. Hey, look, we started this over a week and a half ago. We sent you don't have to tell me. Down. I've been going through hell for a week behind hey, look, these damn drugs. She told me. <laughs> oh, my goodness. Hey, look, I'm going to get her. Oh, my God. All right, Bree, tell your man to simmer down. It, it was all a prank phone call, baby. Oh, my God. He is not going to believe this. Oh, my goodness. He is not going to believe it. Tell me this, Bree. What is the baddest? I'm talking about the baddest radio show in the land. The Steve Harvey Morning Show. Draws and all. Draws and all. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> How did y'all enjoy the gift? I like the gift, man. I like the gift. Yeah. Yeah. Are you stupid? Yeah. <sighs> you no security. You keep stupid nothing. going, man. Yeah, you, you keep, keep stupid going. going. You just That's what my job people. is to keep stupid and going. Now you know I'm about to flip the script in a minute. Like y'all gonna see me change in a minute because you know I'm getting oh, ready. Oh, to your do show's TV coming. Back. I'm getting ready to do my TV show, so you know I gotta have oh. some. You know, yeah. You know I gotta be a mentor now, a love oh. coach. Things finna change. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. okay. So I'm gonna mm -hmm. transform from stupid to love master. And and that's every day. When I watch your you? show, Ready to Love, Tommy, I'm just saying to myself, wow, if they only knew the Tommy <laughs> I know. <laughs> yeah, now he expert on love. I know, I know. All right, listen, coming up at the top of the hour, entertainment news right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, some sad news to report, really sad news out of Houston. Uh, Ghetto Boys rapper Bushwick Bill um, has passed away. He was 52 years old. I think we mentioned earlier uh, this month that he was going through. Uh, he was ill, and uh, he's been in the hospital. He was in a hospital bed in Houston, surrounded by his family when he passed away. Uh, it was around 9.35 p.m. local time in Houston. Bushwick Bill's son, Javon, says his final words were, I will love you forever. Oh, wow. Yes. In, uh, Bushwick is a legend, man. Yeah. Legend. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. The legend. Ghetto Boys? Yes. My man playing tricks on me? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yes, yeah man. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, last and and Javon, month. Lil Javon is a, is, a, is a rapper as well. Yeah, oh, he, he is? He's a, he's oh, okay. Come up now. Oh, his son is? Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. 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 Now, you guys are from Houston, H-Town. Mm. Yeah. You guys are from. Mm -hmm. Carla, you're from. You, yes. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Tommy, Junior. Mm -hmm. Uh -huh. So, so the Ghetto Boys. I mean, what do they mean to you guys? I mean, Shirley, hands down, they are a 
um, hip hop. They're history. historical to Houston. I mean, they they yes. history, man. I mean, they history yeah. across the world, but they are, yeah. they mean a lot to us in Houston, Texas, a whole lot. Well, they help Tommy. Uh, they help put Houston on the map, you know, yes. with hip hop. And people, you know, got introduced to Willie D and Scarface yeah. and, you know, Bushwick. And then, you know, people don't know. I don't know if people really know that Bushwick, he was born with the condition of dwarfism. And right. uh, he shot himself in the eye. I you remember know, that. Because, yeah. you know, people were wondering about what happened. And it was... He was, was it an accident? Under, was it an yeah, accident? it was an accident, okay, okay. and he got into an argument with his girlfriend, but he was under the influence oh, okay. of, yeah, alcohol and, you know, trying to turn his life around later on. He was just in on. L.A. I just saw him like a month mm-hmm. ago. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. You know, I'll, say so, this, yeah. I'll say this about Bushwick. What I, say, what I remember most about Bushwick mm-hmm. is around the holiday time mm-hmm. because Bushwick had passed out turkeys to he the inner city. He would give back. He'd yeah, give back, give back mm-hmm. to the community. He would also yeah. buy Christmas mm-hmm. for inner city kids. Mm-hmm. He'd buy bikes for mm-hmm. the inner city. He was uh-huh. that type of giving dude. Yeah. You know, he, right. he really was. No ego at all. Yeah, I, uh-uh. yeah. I met him before on, a, on another show uh, I worked mm-hmm. on. And uh, just a nice guy. He just wanted to be loved. That's yeah. what I got from That's him. That's it. Just, That's he it. just yeah. wanted people to love him. No, he really you know? great. Yeah. 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 He came well, to the spot, you. man. He was in LA, in, in LA and hanging out at the club. Wow. It was cool. Wow. When those three boys hit the stage, Woo. oh, my God. Yeah. Oh my God! But you know what? Oh a lot of God. people don't know. There's a lot of good groups that came out of Houston, man. I mean, uh-huh. a lot of groups came yeah. out of Houston, man. Oh yeah, H Town, H Town, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. We could start with the Queen herself. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> yeah, bring the beat in. Yeah, <laughs> yeah but uh, yeah. our condolences to the family yeah. of Bush Wick Bill, his son. Uh, Javon the again. Shaw yeah, that's his last name. Yeah. Yep. The, the music Shaw will family. live on yeah. forever. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. we announced yeah. Uh, last yeah. month that uh, he had stage four pancreatic cancer. He had yeah. uh, received that diagnosis. So, and to the yeah. whole rap family. Yeah. yeah. Yes. Yeah. Jay yeah. Prince. The Jay whole. Prince. I never saw. Yeah. Yeah. I heard there's going to be a public memorial too. The family might do that as well. And uh, okay. Houston, so wow. That'd be nice. That's good. Yeah. Yeah. Come That'd out. be good. All right. Well, um, wow. Yeah, that's that's sad because um, he's part of our, our growing up and everything. I mean, we remember him and their their music mm-hmm. and all of that. Mm-hmm. And uh, Legends. yeah, absolutely. And Miss Ann is here uh, now with more on the headlines and the latest, of course, on that deadly helicopter crash in New York City on 7th Avenue. But uh, first, we do have to say happy belated birthday to Miss Anne. Yeah, yeah. Her birthday, Miss Anne. As ever, Miss Anne. It was yesterday, and of course, she yes. had the day off to celebrate. Oh. And Miss mm-hmm. Anne, we love you, and we celebrate you every day. We love Miss Anne. Yes, yes, yes. We yes. love you, Miss Anne. Mm-hmm. We love you, Miss Anne. All right, Jay. Bring All right, on. everybody. It's time for the news with Miss Anne Tripp. All right. Thank you very much. And I was 21 for the 21st time yesterday. Okay. Anyway, this is Antrip with the news. Good morning. After weeks of negotiation, the Justice Department has finally agreed to provide the Congress with the key evidence collected in the Mueller report, evidence that could shed light on possible obstruction of justice and abuse of power by President Trump. Now, just what the Justice Department has agreed to provide is not clear. However, the House Judiciary Committee, which asked for the extra material, is indicating that the Justice Department move is a real breakthrough. So it also looks as if the House will back away from threats to hold U.S. Attorney William Barr, U.S. Attorney General, rather, William Barr, in contempt of Congress, even though the House is scheduled to proceed later today with a vote to empower the, the, the Judiciary Committee to take Barr to court to fully enforce its subpoena, even though, again, that may not longer be necessary, but they're probably going to take a vote anyway. The stock market bounced back yesterday after President Trump didn't follow through on his threat to impose escalating tariffs on all Mexican goods. But the president tells CNBC, hey, make no mistake, it was because of his threat, he says, that our neighbor to the south agreed to do more to curb the flow of migrants from Central America. If we didn't have tariffs, we wouldn't have made a deal with Mexico. We got everything we wanted, and we're going to be a great partner to Mexico now because now they respect us. U.S. business leaders, even some Republicans, had criticized the idea, saying it would have had a negative effect on both our economies. But now Trump is also threatening to slap tariffs on China unless he can get a deal that he wants out of them. 
Former Red Sox slugger David Ortiz recovering after being shot in a bar in his native Dominican Republic. He's now been flown to Boston for post-surgical care. Local authorities say that an unidentified man shot the legendary player in the back. It was in a club, a group like a restaurant type of thing, point-blank range. The gunman was riding a motorcycle. Dave Ortiz rushed to a nearby clinic where he underwent life-saving surgery, losing part of his gallbladder, part of his intestine. They say his liver also damaged. He's listed in stable condition before being flown to Boston. Meanwhile, the man who drove the motorcycle that the gunman was on. The guy driving it was snatched off and badly beaten by the crowd. He's under arrest. They're questioning him. The retired David Ortiz, nicknamed Big Poppy, played in the majors for 20 seasons. Real sad news in the world of sports in Florida. Former Colts and Rams cornerback Eric Patterson shot and killed Saturday morning. According to Tampa Bay police, his roommate heard a commotion inside their home and came inside to find Patterson lying on his back. They say the 26-year-old athlete was taken to a nearby hospital and he later died. They're looking for the gunman. The pilot killed out yesterday miraculously in New York City where Noah was injured when it took off at 34th Street and actually landed on the top of a building. Finally, today is National German Chocolate Day. I guess some people really like Choco Choco Latte. Now back to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. In trending hip-hop news, dozens of fans braved the rain to show support for the late Notorious B.I.G. in New York City on Monday. Mm-hmm. It was the oh. day before what we Ugh. what we what would have been his 47th birthday. Wow! Wow! So young. Huh? Time waits for no one. That is wow. for sure. 47 years mm. old. Biggie's mom, Valletta Wallace, Miss Valletta Wallace, I should say, spoke to the crowd in the Bed Stuy section of Brooklyn at a street renaming ceremony. St. James Place at the corner of Fulton Street is now called Christopher Notorious B.I.G. Wallace Way. Wow. And I got that right over there on Biggie Way. All right. That even sound good. What you, you say, Jay? It. It's all good. right up there off Biggie Way. You can't miss it. It's <laughs> Biggie up there. Way. Yeah. Yeah. Biggie Way. Where ball. you at, Jay? Where you at? <laughs> I'm right over here, Biggie Way. Swing by and get a brother, man. <laughs> I love that. I love that. So the street is now going to be called Christopher Notorious B.I.G. Wallace Way in honor of Biggie who grew up just down the block and helped put the hood on the map, on the rap I map for sure. they're not sure. doing them like they did the Obama uh, signs. They were stealing them, and they kept putting them up, and they were stealing them. Oh, here so in they, California, yeah, in, in California. LA. So they had to put them up higher and because people were stealing them. So <laughs> they'll, oh, figure they they they'll figure yeah, out a way. They'll figure out a way. They need to use that, 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 them Allen uh, bolts, Chuck, that Allen wrench. Uh, Jay. <laughs> <laughs> Ain't nobody got no Allen wrenches. Use that. <laughs> Is that when you're under the car and you're fixing the car and you slide out and say, hand me that Allen <laughs> And try it now. Yes. <laughs> yes. That's that wrench that comes with the Ikea stuff. Yeah, you it know? is. It is. It's yeah. shaped like a seven or an L. Yeah. It sounds like a little L. You uh-huh. need that. If you put that up, I promise you, them signs going to stay up there. <laughs> well, Biggie's son, Christopher Wallace Jr., and his daughter, Tiana, uh, were both on hand in honor uh, to honor their dad as uh, was his former Junior Mafia group member and bad boy label mate. Of course, you know Lil' Kim was going to be there. Was there any doubt? I saw it. I saw the ceremony on... uh... TV and uh, Kim mm. was doing her thing. Little Seats was Good there too. Her. Good for her. Yeah, yeah. yeah. I told yeah. y'all I saw Little Kim in Vegas. Woo. Oh, you did. Oh, no. did you tell us that? Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, You yeah, know, yeah, you at, at Janice's party, That's man, right. Little Kim grabbed that microphone Ooh, and Little Kim dropped like had four it. names. Go ahead, Tommy. I love you, man. You dropped like four <laughs> names. I love you. Man. <laughs> yeah, he saw Little Kim at Janice's birthday party. Uh huh. Uh-huh. Yeah. Like that. While me and Janice, go while me and Janice get was hanging. Yeah. Exactly. Exactly. After, yeah. after Dougie dog. Fresh dropped the mic. Right. Oh, Pick up that name. Pick it up. When, when him and four. Teddy Riley got through. <laughs> Coming up next at 34 after the hour, the NBA Finals. Woo, this is a this is something people didn't expect. Tell them the Raptors versus the Warriors. What? Warriors come out and come play. Out. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, you are here. Let's oh. hear some sports talk. Oh for my you. gosh. Junior. We still got Junior? some more basketball. <laughs> yeah. It's some yeah. more basketball. It's, it shouldn't have been. 106 <laughs> to 105. Golden State Warrior pulled it off. Oh my wow. God. Man. All that was close. I feel for mm. Toronto. They were right there. I'm like, they, they lost that game, T. Yeah, you know what, man? You, you, 
When you when you got a, a team like Golden State down three to one, mm-hmm. you're supposed to go on and finish the deal. And you at home, you're supposed to finish you're the deal, to man. Supposed to finish that. And then Kevin Durant played the game. Left the, yeah. Left the yeah. second yeah. quarter. Left the second quarter. Yeah, but he got he, he he gave him that eleven. Now, if they don't have that eleven from Kevin, they lose. Yeah. yeah. Hello. Because yeah. boy, he was on this? fire. Yeah. Can I say this? You know, I know oh, much I know much about basketball. They're Canada. We're the USA. Okay, that's all I'm going with. <laughs> They're Canada. We're the USA. Okay. What that's got to do with basketball? Yeah, they're, they're in Canada. We we're got in the Captain USA. Captain Obvious. <laughs> what are you yeah. saying? Yes. <laughs> what that's got that? nothing to do we with don't... basketball. They're, <laughs> they're in Canada. We're in the yeah. USA. <laughs> what you trying to say? <laughs> they're out the country. Okay. All right. Oh. <laughs> <That's> so crazy. <laughs> oh, you know man. what, Jay? You. you... <laughs> So, oh, Junior, t- tell us what – okay, so you watched the game last night. Yeah. So, right. what happened? I mean, to, I agree with Tommy. Toronto, they supposed to close the it, deal. It was – you know, Clay Thompson hit a big shot with okay. 56 seconds left in the game. Did you and see that gave too? them a 106-103 lead. And I'm telling uh-huh. you, that was big. But then it was some – DeMarcus, because we had the game, and you fought, you had a illegal pick that gave the ball back to Toronto. Mm-hmm. But then they threw the, the ball away. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Right after that, so now you got to, that's two turnovers under a minute. You can't have that because mm. they're Canada and we're the USA. <laughs> <laughs> Shut up, fool! <laughs> and did you see Monica sing the singer Monica? Oh, sounds, oh, oh yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. She did the national anthem. And if she's well, listening to the show this morning. A three two. Hmm? Oh, cause cause she's going. No, look, Junior. Let her get through what she's going through. Hey, <laughs> he's talking about well, eight three two already. The, uh, the ink on the papers aren't even dry but yet. But the Junior. orders put in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to understand. The orders <laughs> in. So when you come out, there's uh-huh. somebody outside. Uh-huh. I'm gonna be out at the courthouse. What they say? <laughs> <laughs> so what you think now, Tommy? Uh, game six, Oakland, Junior. I still, Thursday. I'm yeah. still pulling for Toronto. I'm. Still yeah. Still, man, I, I still I'm think gonna they're gonna Jay pull it off. I, they have oh, won. No. They won what two games country. in um in Golden State, so it's doable. It's doable. Uh, uh, in it's Oakland. doable. Uh-huh. How y'all going uh-huh. Yeah, you know, in Oakland. Country. Yeah. How are What'd y'all you say, going Jay? Own, how are y'all going against your own country? This is the U.S. Because isn't? we're Rockets fans, and Golden State always beat thank you beat the Rockets. Uh, so you. we cheer uh, for yeah, Toronto. Yeah, we cheer for Toronto. The East, whoever's in the East, that's who we cheer for. Anybody. <laughs> It could have been Philadelphia. We don't care. <laughs> Milwaukee. We didn't care. Y'all didn't care. No, okay. uh, no. We're going. Uh, uh, I, I think it's. I think it's going to go seven games, though. I really do. At this point. Wow. I, I, I don't want it to, but I think it's going to be seven. Games. I don't think Kevin Durant coming back. No, he's not. No, he was out crutches. I saw. Yeah. Him. No, he's done. I think he's, he's done. done. He, yeah. He gave it a good shot, though. No, he no. Really what did. you saw last night was Kevin Durant's last game as as a Warrior. You think he so? Gone. Oh, doctor, he gone. Where's he, Where's he go? going? Junior, New York. They say New, New York. York. They say New That's York. That's what my they husband said. Yeah. He they going say to probably going to go probably going to New York, which is which is really good for him. You know, this time hey, last stock, year we were talking about, though, about, about about LeBron coming to LA. This time last yeah. year. Yeah. We sure were, sure. Uh-huh. I can't believe yeah. you knew that. I called it. I did call it. I did call it. Yeah, you it. said it. I did. I said and it. I said this is all Kyrie Irving's fault. It, Kyrie and, and would Carly have stayed. Right. You're absolutely <laughs> right, Carla. Because that's the truth. If Kyrie yeah. would have stayed in Cleveland, mm-hmm. so right. we would have had none of these problems. None of this. Now where Kyrie this. at now? Where he at now? Oh, I know one thing. Well, I know he ain't. I know Apologizing. he ain't. Apologizing. I know he ain't. After, Where? after every game, I always call Junior. Was this a loss or an ass whooping? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, he do. There this was, was just a loss right yeah. here. <laughs> now, that was a loss. That was two, okay. two teams for the hard. That's a loss. Mm. 106, 105, you can't play it no better than that. Wow. wow. You know, and then you both live to fight another day. So you got to see. So next game going to be third. And what was All the score right. one more time? 106, 105. Golden Woo, State. Woo! Woo! The nephew is up next with a prank phone call right after this. Bye, Kevin Durant. (laughs) You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, coming up at the top of the hour, right about four minutes after, is my strawberry letter for today. Subject, there's turmoil in my congregation. Uh Uh-oh. You hear Uh that? Uh Uh Uh-oh, this must be from a pastor. What? There's turmoil in my congregation. Bitch, I know the church, too. Uh oh, mm-hmm. <laughs> it could be any church in America, <laughs> but right now the nephew is here with today's prank phone call. What you well, got for Shirley, us? Well, we might as well go on and get in that category. Today's title is Church Feet. Church 
speed. As many people that you prank in the church, are you even allowed to go? I go to churches where they don't know who I am. <laughs> <laughs> he, I go where I cannot be recognized. Right now, this is church fees running cat dog. Mm. Hello. Hello, I'm trying to reach Sister Tracy. Hey, you got her. Hey. Uh, how you doing? This is uh, this is Brother Glenn from the church. Hey, Brother Glenn, how you doing? I'm good. I'm good. I'm real good. Uh, did you enjoy service this morning? Oh, I I enjoyed it, Pastor. Woo! <laughs> <laughs> Pastor brought it down. Yes, he did. Day. Yes, he did. Oh my God, that was a word for me. Right, 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 right. So, what do I owe the pleasure of this call? Uh, I wanted to give you some information that the. Um, that the church has come up with, and we wanted to let you know what was going on before next Sunday. You, I, I didn't interrupt you, did I? Uh, no, no. I actually, uh, I, I, I may sound a little, little off a little bit. I'm trying to, to get dinner ready for my little babies, my little darlings, and I'm trying to. Your voice sounds so familiar to me. It just sounds so familiar. I'm trying to place, place that voice. Okay. Well, you've seen me at the church quite a few times. I think I have. I'm just trying to place it. I, I can't place it right now. But what can, okay. what can I do, okay. for Glenn? Well, nevertheless, I, I just wanted. Here's, here's what's going on. Uh, now, are you aware that for the last uh, the last six Sundays you've been actually uh, coming into service late? Have you realized that? Yes, I I, um, I, I know. I, I, I'm sorry about that, but, uh, I, you know, yes, I have. I have my reasons, so. though. Okay. Okay. Well, here's what's going on. The officials at the church have uh, gotten together, and this is what they've decided on, is that anybody who is late uh, starting next Sunday, there will be a $15 charge for that. For coming in and disrupting service, uh, and fast, ho, 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 fast, is, fast is tired of service being disrupted by people walking in late. That that could not come at a worse time. I don't have fifteen dollars to give. Look, I'm sorry. I'm sorry that we're late. We are doing our best. I have three young kids, two, seven, and nine, and they are a handful. And we do the best that we can to get to church on time. And to tell you the truth, when we get there. It's during praise and worship. I mean, Pastor ain't even preaching yet. So okay. I know it's not. Pastor's not up yet, but he's he's stating that uh, people coming in, it just seems very disrupted to the service that's going on. That's So nevertheless, like I said, this is a warning call, you know, to let you know that if you are late on next Sunday, then they, they will be charging you $15 uh, a late charge. And, and actually, you won't be able to even come in until you, uh, until you pay the $15. I can't even get in church with, with look, okay, look, I don't owe nothing. I don't owe you no explanation. But I need to tell you something. We are, me and my kids, for the last few Sundays that we've been late, it's because my car broke down. We we are on the bus, man, public transportation. Okay. I mean, I, and I understand, I understand, I, I sympathize with everything that you're going through. But why are you calling, if you understand, why are you calling me about $15 if you understand what I'm going through? Well, I didn't, I, first of all, I didn't know what you were going, why are you raising your voice at me? Why are you raising, did you just raise your voice at me? You know what, you know what, I think you're raising your voice at me. How dare okay. you call me about this, about a fee, and I'm there at church? I got my kids in there trying to raise them up in the way they should go, just like the Bible say. And you know why I got to do this and why I'm late, why, why we got to catch the bus. Do you understand why that is, Brother Glenn? No, I do not. That is because they, so their daddies ain't uh, uh, and they, okay. yeah. So, Tracy, just, you, you got to calm down a little bit now. Uh, oh, Jesus, help me, Jesus, help me, Jesus. Help okay, me. listen, uh, so here's the deal. All I can do is tell you this. I hope you can make it. Maybe you can catch an earlier bus. You know what I mean, and get there a little earlier. But but I'm just stating the facts that as of next Sunday, if you come in late, it's fifteen dollar late fee, and that's what you'll pay in order to get in the service. You know what? Well, maybe next Sunday I just won't be there. How about that? You know, I'm already working six days a week. The only day I have off is Sunday. I'm breaking breaking my back. Do you know I work two jobs? I work two jobs, and they always trying to take money out of my check, always trying to pull me here and there, and I'm always tired. I get two hours of sleep, and then now the church wants to dump another $15 charging me for being at church when that's what I'm supposed to do? But you're coming in late, though, Sister Tracy. You, you know what? You know what? Late ain't bad, okay? I, I might be delayed, but I ain't denied, and I'm getting there the best way that I know how. We're on the bus. I have to put my kids on the school bus. And not only do I have to put them on the school bus, then I have to get on the bus myself to work because I don't have a car because their daddies ain't doing nothing.
nothing for them. Do you understand what I'm saying to you? I need to under... Daddy, daddy number one? Guess what? He ain't Daddy number two? He in jail, been there about five years. He ain't And daddy number three? He decided to go ahead and walk out. He ain't, I ain't heard from that that trifling in about seven months. Now, he know we're struggling. He had the nerve to take my wallet, too. You don't, you don't even understand what I'm going through. You don't even understand that I'm trying to make a better life for me and my children. There is one more thing, Sister Tracy, that the church wants you to know before next Sunday that you definitely need to know. And what one more thing does the church want me to know besides $15? The church just wants you to know that this is nephew Tommy from the Steve Harvey Morning Show. Your sister Patrice got me to prank phone call you. <laughs> I am going to whoop her. I'm going to whoop her ass. I'm going to whoop her ass. Are you? She know I ain't got time for that. She know I ain't got time for that. Oh, Patrice. Uh -huh. Yeah, girl, your, your sister got you. You all right? <laughs> Oh, I got something for her. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> she told me, she said, she said, my sister car oh. broke down. She said she got these kids. She over there struggling, struggling. She trying yeah. to make it. But you got to give her a hard time. She just wanted, she wanted, she wanted you to put a, she wanted to put a smile on your face. <laughs> well, she did. Well, once <laughs> things settled, I'm going to have to say she did. Okay. <laughs> you all right? Wow, now that I know you y'all were joking and now I know this is nephew Tommy. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I gotta ask you something, baby. What's the baddest and I mean the baddest radio show in the land? The Steve Harvey Morning Show, baby. <laughs> <laughs> All Kirk right. Steve's. I mean, how many? She should pay. Okay. I mean, you you won't be coming in late no more, I bet you. Let you you let it go a couple of times. After three or four, you need to pay. Carla, don't nobody care nothing about what you did the night before? Yeah. Don't nobody care? It yeah, seems to much. be every Sunday with her. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> this, this the last four or five times, Carla, she done showed up late. You know, look now. So? <laughs> it's a late fee when you come in. Mm -mm, mm -mm. And it's just You're another way for the church to make money because we have things we have to pay for. Church fees. I like it. Now, That's when y'all get to church, Cheryl and Carla, what time y'all get there? I get there early. Yeah. I get there mm -hmm. on time. Mm -hmm. crazy. That's crazy. Oh, so no, ain't now just... one of y'all walked in after praise and worship. Mm -hmm. I mean, you know, when, when I was younger, but you know, now. It was now... devotion. You know, what? now it's different. You know, I like to be on time. I, I just like Rent. to be on time for the word. I, I do. I like to be on time for God. That's because he's on time for me. And well, that's how I look at time. it. Rent a car and take too, it back Shirley. late and see what happens. Huh? What? I like what Shirley is saying, but, I, you know, get a seat. Yeah, get a seat. You know, all of that. Absolutely. I like showing up for, for him because he shows But let me ask y'all this, y'all. Another thing about church. Why do so many people think they got season seats like they can sit there every Every Sunday. Oh, oh, absolutely. That seat to them. Uh, what, what, what is that about? <laughs> we have a section where we sit. Yeah. Because I, people I are know. creatures they, of they habit, habit, Tommy. Yeah. Uh -huh. They like yeah. sitting where they sit, what? where they like to sit. I but like to sit ain't up in the front. No seat. <laughs> 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 Thank you, nephew. Long. Thank you, guys. We got to get out of here. Up next, <laughs> it is today's strawberry letter subject. There's turmoil in my congregation, and <laughs> turmoil on the show about it right now. <laughs> Uh, we'll get into it right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, time now for today's Strawberry Letter. And listen, if you need advice on relationships, on dating, work, sex, parenting, and more, please submit your Strawberry Letter to steveharveyfm.com and click Submit Strawberry Letter. I got to say this really, really quickly. You know I was in Atlanta over the weekend at the uh, Alma G. Davis Foundation 10th anniversary celebration. Why was everyone coming up to me asking me about the letter we did last week where the sister-in-law was doing her brother-in-law and she oh. had two kids? They were like, come on, Shirley. Come on now. Come on. Did we you had guys? To make that up. Yeah, did you guys they make that they up? Made they don't up. think yeah, it's real. I know. So many people stopped me about that one particular letter. Well, here's another one, okay? <laughs> Here, here's another one. You ready? Let's go. Buckle up and hold on tight. We got it for you. Here it is, the strawberry letter. Subject, there's turmoil in my congregation. Dear Stephen Shirley, since you help everyone, I hope you can help me too. 
I have been the senior pastor of my congregation for 13 years, and lately I've been having a problem with an associate minister. He is 41 years old, and he is on his fourth marriage. Now, his current marriage is in shambles because he has left his wife and moved in with one of the older sisters of the church. He told his wife that he was leaving her, but none of us in the church had any idea it would be Sister Joanne that he moved in with. Joanne is 56 and single, and she knows this man is married, and she knows his wife, but they are not close. When things hit the fan a month ago, I offered them both counseling and advised them that what they were doing was wrong. I told Sister that uh, she is shacking up with a married man, and I told him it was wrong to just leave his wife like that and to cause her this kind of embarrassment. It has caused such a big stir at the church that I had to tell him that he could no longer preach there. Sister Joanne still comes to church like nothing has happened, and this Sunday she stopped me after church and told me she is very happy, and they have plans to get married as soon as he gets out of his fourth marriage. This man can't keep a job, and he doesn't have anything to add to Joanne's life. I hope and pray that they don't think I'm going to marry them. I don't know how to handle this type of turmoil, so I have turned to you, Steve. What do I do? I want to put them both out of the church. Well, that's not a bad suggestion, senior pastor. That is not a bad (laughs) suggestion. You are the senior pastor, which means you're the leader of the church. You're the shepherd. Uh, You know, supposedly what you say goes, you have a staff of ministers. You guys uh, can, you know, have one of those uh, meetings and you can talk about this situation. Because if it's causing turmoil and division in your church, that's not a good thing, okay? Uh, You have a direct line to the Lord. You were called by God. So you need to pray seriously about this situation and ask him how you should handle it. If you don't put them out of the church, you can certainly sit him down and not let him preach anymore as associate minister. And is he? does he know the Bible? Is he reading it at all? Uh, there's stuff in there about what he's doing. It's in the Bible, okay? And he's in the church and preaching to people. This is his fourth wife. Uh, no, his fourth marriage, and, and he's working on number five now. Um If he reads the Bible, uh, I I think one of the scriptures says uh, a a man who doesn't work shouldn't eat. You say this man can't keep a job. What is he going to offer, Sister Joanne? What has he offered his wife, his current wife and all these other women? Yeah, you need to sit him down. This is on you, senior pastor. It's your church. okay? like I said, you are the leader of this congregation. You have to get your members in line. okay? Uh, your responsibility, part of it as a pastor, is to teach the Bible, okay? And and this stuff is in there, so you need to do some more studying, I would suggest, so you can hear from the Lord and see what he'll tell you about handling this situation. Put them out, sit them down, all of those things. Pray for them. Do not, I, I'm, I'm with you. I don't think you should marry them at all. I hope they don't even ask you. If they don't understand what they're doing wrong, there's a problem. I mean, they're breaking Ten Commandments. I mean, there's so much sin going on here. You know, this is crazy. And you got to sit them down and tell them right from wrong. Don't they know right from wrong? Because they certainly uh, don't act like they do. And it's on you. Yeah, if you want to put them both out of the church, you probably should. Because they're not listening to you. They're not. And it's not coming from you. You're the vessel from the Lord. All right. Uh, Jay. Vessel. Put him out the church. The vessel. <laughs> yeah, Put him out the church. Put him out the church. Division and turmoil the in the church. pastor's job is to pastor. That's his job. <laughs> it is to pastor. Pastor means to look over, govern everybody in there. The one phrase that I really remember in the Bible that really stands out Uh for me is judge ye not, Uh lest ye be judged. Jesus hung out with thieves, liars, murderers, backsliders. I'm talking about the disciples. He hung out with them people. Who are you to judge a man that's happy with an old, who are you? You crazy man. Who are you to judge a man that has found some happiness in an older woman? Judge ye not, pastor.
said the man has been married 10,000 times. Said the man had been met. Open the book and pastor. That's what you need to do. Open the book and pastor. That's Jay. all you're supposed to do. Open, open the book and pastor. Jay, there is a such thing as right and wrong, and you know that. Open the book. <laughs> I don't think Every he's. Sunday. I don't think he's doing and, that though. I don't think pastor. he's opening the book. I really Man, don't. That's what you need to do, Pastor. Because they open would the book and Pastor. They would either at least know better if he was doing. Open that. the book and Pastor. <laughs> oh, he got. The book. Said the man who's been. What about luck. the wife, though, Jay? What about the wife? <laughs> open <man>? the book <laughs> and Pastor. <laughs> ignorant. <laughs> All right, listen. Uh, we'll be back. We'll come back and hear from uh, the young one on, on the team, Junior. We'll hear from Tommy as well. That's coming up at 23 after the hour, part two of today's Strawberry Letter. There's turmoil in my congregation right after this. <laughs> You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, guys. Let's recap today's Strawberry Letter. This is a very interesting one. Subject, there's turmoil in my congregation. This letter was written by the senior pastor. Uh, he's been the senior pastor for 13 years. Lately, he's having a problem with his associate, uh, associate minister. Associate minister, 41 years old, has been married four times, getting ready to leave his fourth wife and hook up with one of the older sisters in the church. He has left his wife. He has moved in with this older young lady. Like I said, the associate pastor, 41 years old, uh, he's moving in with Sister Joanne, who's 56 and single. Uh, Sister Joanne knows his wife. They are not close. Uh, senior pastor, uh, in the meantime, has told uh, them both, uh, advised them that what they're doing is wrong. Uh, shacking up with a man, she told Sister Joanne, is uh, not what she should be doing. This man can't keep a steady job. Uh, he has no plans to help you uh, during the marriage. And what are you marrying him for? And Sister Joanne, she's saying it's just clueless. She's just told her that she's so happy and she can't wait till he gets out of his fourth marriage so he can marry her. And uh, pretty much that's where we are. Uh, and the senior pastor says uh, he or she doesn't know how to handle this. And uh, she wants to put both of them out of the church. Mm. I said, yeah. Go ahead and put both of them out of the church, mm -hmm. or at least sit both of them down. And Jay said, uh, "Judge not." And yeah, uh, pastor, now, just pastor. <laughs> uh, and and the senior pastor is a leader and the shepherd of the church. So I mean, you know, instruction comes from God, and He passes that on to the congregation. They're not listening to Him. I'm with Jay, <laughs> pastor. But here's here's an opportunity mm -hmm. to grow our congregation. See, he's missing an opportunity uh -huh. to grow. I know it's turmoil, but there's opportunity in turmoil. See, what you need to open that book and pass, and your sermons should be about them mm -hmm. too. Because everybody right. in there knows. Mm -hmm. And so I came up with some sermon titles you can speak on. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Such as yeah. uh, shacking up and stepping out. <laughs> this, this, this sermon in here today is shacking up uh -huh. and stepping out. <laughs> or, or, or this one might work too. Uh, this morning, I want to come to y'all. We talking about uh, cheating in the next pew. Yeah. <laughs> cheating in the next pew. Uh -huh. Yeah. Uh -huh. Cheating uh -huh. in the next pew. Uh, 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 how, how about this? Uh, yeah. My man, your husband. <laughs> huh? This is some sermon yes. titles he can uh, use. Help. Uh, I like this one too. Jezebel's stay close. Oh, <laughs> come on, man. Boy, we in here preaching. We got some sermons. Hold on, here go another one too. Oh, wait. Uh -huh. If you're thinking lonely now, uh -huh. uh, wait until tonight. Uh -huh. Wait until tonight. Yeah. yeah. Preach on it. Preach uh, on it. Uh, here's another one you got too. Uh, uh -huh. Sodom and Gomorrah Ooh. in your home. Yes. <laughs> and the last sermon I think he could probably preach on that'll probably on. be effective to grow this congregation. Uh -huh. hmm. Another woman trash is another woman's trash. Yeah. <laughs> oh. Wow. Let, let, let me add to that, Junior. Let me add Come to on. that. If love and you is wrong, <laughs> I'm going to do right. Come on, Rousseau. I hate all of you guys. <laughs> so I think he's just looking at it wrong. Yeah, he's looking at it wrong. Talk about the turmoil in your congregation. I agree with you guys. I definitely think it's the pastor because he's the leader. Yeah. All right, come on, nephew. What but you there got? is another sermon. Uh, Excuse me uh, if I would. Oh, oh <clears throat> this is Dick and Dep Cham in the building. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Yes. Pastor, you are dealing with a pulpit. Oh, 
I, I said it right there. Ah, oh. uh, pulpit. Oh, you are dealing with somebody uh, that's uh, looking uh, for Bible Belt booty. That's what you're looking for. You're looking for somebody looking Bible for Bible Belt, Belt booty. You're searching stupid. and lurking for Hallelujah hips. That's what you're looking for. Hallelujah. Uh, a uh, usher rusher. That's who you're dealing with. That's what you got <laughs> in your in your uh, uh, choir right desirer. That's what you have that you're dealing with. Okay, uh, your church has been contaminated with a pulpit hoe, and I'm just saying right now he carries a virus called NBV. What's that? NBV. What's NBV? New booty virus. He is just, he, he, he <laughs> loves new booty. New booty. Yeah. Ain't nothing like new booty. Ain't no booty like a new booty booty because a new booty booty don't stop. New booty is <laughs> no the problem. Booty like new booty, booty virus. NBV. NBV is new booty virus. See, 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 what is going on is Miss Joanne is oh, new right. booty. That ex, mm -hmm. that wife, that that wife that he's been with, that's old booty. But now he he's it. got new booty. But what Joanne has not done is done Mr. the Joanne. math on all the old booties. Mm -hmm. You won't be long, Miss Joanne, before you will be a new booty, and our old booty is right around the corner. You new booty now, old booty later. It's on the way. All all new booties stand, please. New uh -huh. booties. <laughs> new booties. Yeah. Turn to your new booty. <laughs> Turn to your Turn new over booty. There. Shirley and Carla, tradition. I don't know where y'all fall in. You fall in where you fall in, Shirley and Carla. Uh, Keep my what? name out of this raggedy yes. shirt. When I, when I speak on your booty, bring it up now. Uh -uh, uh -uh, uh -uh. All right. <laughs> but, yeah, this... uh, the new booties is the problem, but old booties... Shall come. Ms. Thank Joanne? you, Deacon Def Jam. Okay, thank you very much. Don't uh, cut me off in the middle of a, middle of a booty speech. Don't you, do that. You Not can yet. email us or Instagram us your thoughts on today's Strawberry Letter at Steve Harvey FM, or you can check out the Strawberry Letter podcast. That's on demand, okay? Coming up at 46 after the hour, we're going to play a little comedy roulette, guys, Woo! right after this. Yeah. All booties right. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Jay Anthony Brown is here with today's comedy roulette. Take it away, Jay. Here we go. You take four subjects, put them on the wheel. Where the wheels stop, we can do the damn thing because Junior's comedian, Tommy's comedian, and I'm a comedian. Spun it. Let's go. All right, here we go. Things you say when you're about to run out of gas. Oh, I like that. All right, that. Okay. that's one. I like that. Mm -hmm. Things women say to men when they're fed up. Ooh, I like that ooh, too. Oh, yeah, okay. like oh, yeah, I've said a few of these things. I'm sure you have too, Carla. Uh, things old people say, uh, things old people can say to you and get away with it. Oh, yeah. <laughs> and then here we go. Insults by racial couples here. Oh, wow. Oh, mm. Okay. Oh, okay. Ooh, let's okay. spin the wheel. Yeah. Old people, old people. Old people. Ooh, oh. Which, oh, oh! it came out to things women say to men when they're fed up. Let's yeah, go. Yeah. Oh. yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, let me start it off. Let me start uh -huh. it off. Every man's heard this. I can't. I just can't. I just can't. Okay. I just, <laughs> yes. I, I just can't. I just can't. I just, <laughs> I can't with you. Okay. No, no, just, no. <laughs> you need to know I'm faking it. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I need you to understand that I'm not in there. <laughs> My mind is gone. <laughs> I'm not here with you my, no more. You know what? You know what? What? My last man was way bigger than this. I'm just saying. He was just way. Yeah. Mm. Mm. I said these things. What is what? happening? Oh, that's what y'all tell her. <laughs> no, that's what y'all say. No, you said these things. When no, y'all fed never up. said any of this. Oh, I had never about, said that. How about this? No. It's not even a word. It's just right here. Mm. Oh, 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 yeah, I've done that. <laughs> that Guilty. means a lot. <laughs> oh, <laughs> means a lot. Yeah. 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 Mm. yeah. How about this, Jay? They come home one day, they say, I'm moving. Where you going? <laughs> <laughs> Things women say to men when they're fed up. I'm moving. Where you going? <laughs> you, 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 you got one more time to tell me how your mama fried chicken. You know what? You got one more time. Tell me about your mama's chicken. <laughs> okay, how about this one? Sex again? Again? Really? <laughs> really? <laughs> Things women say to men when they're fed up. You gonna yes. be sleeping with your Madden football game. That's what you <laughs> yes. You yes. gonna yes. sleep yes. with that PlayStation. <laughs> Take it home, Tom. Come on, Take guys. Come on, so you, uh, 
You think that's your son? Hmm? Oh, that's what you think. These mean, hateful women you guys that's have what been you with. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right, listen, thank you guys. Good job as always. Coming up at the top of the hour, stupid. We'll tell you what is the most stressed city in the country. All right? That's coming up right after this. Yeah. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. A new survey finds that Los Angeles is the most stressed city in the U.S. Is anybody surprised by that? Anyone? (laughs) Not Not over here. Not at all. Uh, Yeah, it's the most stressed city in the U.S. with 76% of residents say they are at least somewhat stressed each day. Only 6% saying they have no stress at all. Why do you think we're so stressed out here, Sharon? Why do you think? The traffic? Yeah, definitely the traffic, the the housing, the cost of housing. The cost yes. of living. Yeah, right? yeah. Yes. And the yeah. transit system is just horrible if yeah. you live in L.A. You never know. I don't know how L.A. is stressed. The whole doggone city smells like a bag of weed. <laughs> the whole more relaxed. City. Maybe Man, that's like why. Maybe that is why it's legal here. Well, you can't get weed where you want it out here. That's sure. Yeah, <laughs> uh, because it's traffic in LA. No matter when you yeah. go out there, it's the traffic. traffic. So yeah, bad. it's and crazy. There's no train system. No, out yeah. There. Well, like they're building out. one. They're they're building it now. They're in the process. Uh, those in LA are so stressed out. Uh, they are the most likely out of the entire country to say their city is the hardest to live in. Coming in just behind Los Angeles and stress levels, yeah, New York. Yeah, I thought New York would be number one. Uh, Where 72% of people say they deal with stress each day. It's followed by Chicago. Uh, It's followed with 65%. Then Miami, 64%. Then Dallas, 48%. San Francisco, 44%. So, uh, you know, we could... There's so many reasons, I guess, why L.A. is so stressed. Well, the, like I said, the rent out here, man, it, it's cost just of living. Yeah, the cost of living yeah. is, cost of living is, is so is ridiculous. It is. Oh, man. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. and there's gentrification going on everywhere in yes. Los Angeles. Everywhere yes. in Los Angeles. So Can you, I just say something? When yeah. that little white girl with a ponytail go by your house, your taxes is going up, okay? When she run by your house. When she jog past your house in the morning, your Put taxes is going up. <laughs> Put them AirPods yeah. in her yeah. Yes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Well, yeah. I wish she would go jogging in the park where I go so, <laughs> so they could come and do something about those gophers. <laughs> oh, my God. They stick their little heads up out of the Trina, ground. why you always got rodents uh, coming at you? What is that about? They're not coming at me. They're just in the ground, and they stick their heads up out of the ground, and it's scary. I don't like it. Okay. What do you Didn't mean? you have a squirrel chase you one day? And then... Oh, yeah, when I was coming out of the nail salon. <laughs> <laughs> ah. Yeah, yeah, that was scary. I don't even want to. Oh, God. Anyway, yeah. Welcome to L.A. <laughs> wow, stress level. Yeah. But, you know, living in New York, because I lived in New York, I love living there. I do, that too. Was the I really do. Ooh, I it is nice. I love it there. Yeah. Jay, did you live in, in New York a while? No, I've been to New York a, a lot, just, you know, to go to the yeah, theaters. Yeah. We worked out in New York for mm-hmm. a while. And it's just mm-hmm. nice, man, you know. I love living yeah. in New York. Yeah, I love New love, York. I lived yeah. in Jersey and worked in the city. And you really don't need a car in New York. You just don't yeah, need because a of the transportation you don't need system. Nothing. Chicago no, no. either. You don't need car. Chicago, you don't need no. a car in, in Chicago. And New York does not sleep, man. There's something no. open. Man. Man, well, it. Chicago has a great transit system. That was my yes. point. Mm-hmm. Yeah, great yes, transit system. But it is expensive to live in L.A. Yeah, you it gotta is. Steal <laughs> yeah, you got to steal something. What, what you got to steal? Guess, that's breaking the law, Junior. I don't give a damn. You know what they asking me for? They're it, stealing I, from no, you. No, they're stealing from me. Yeah. <laughs> you know what y'all got to do one day? Y- y'all uh-huh. got to come kick it with me at my apartment in Hollywood. I mean, but it need to be like 11 at night. So you need to, the, the, the street Nobody. changes at 11. It's oh, really? different. Ooh. Hey, dog, I went it's, down to Hollywood. I ain't been back down there, Tommy, because me and Mickey Mouse got into it. <laughs> I've not been back down there because Mickey wants to fight about this $5 picture on my phone. I'm not paying for that. That's why the city's stressed. <laughs> Another yeah. thing that makes it stressful is the gas. It's Man. expensive. And then everything's yeah. spread out, so you got to buy gas often. Yeah, when I buy gas, uh-huh. I immediately go in there and steal something. <laughs> Okay. I don't care. I just walked out of there with all kinds uh, of stuff. I got chocolate one time. I got a pen out of there one time. I took some work. paper out of there one time. No, I'm talking about out the receipt holder. 
<laughs> Tell me it's not working. I know it's not. I know it's not. <laughs> I'm with you, Junior. I got so many of them squeegee brushes, man. It so, don't make sense, man. <laughs> yeah, you won't be wiping no windows at Pump Five. <laughs> All right, listen, coming up, more music and more fun with the Steve Harvey Morning Show right after this. We'll be back at 20 after. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, we told you about how the beehive went into attack mode after Beyonce served epic side-eye to Golden State Warrior owner's wife, uh, Nicole Curran, last week. Now Bee's publicist is uh, speaking out. Uh, Yvette Nicole Shore posted a picture of Beyonce and Jay-Z from last year's On The Run tour and called on the Beehive to show the same kind of love to others that they show to each other. I know your love runs deep, but that love has to be given to every human, Yvette, uh, Yvette captioned the photo. It will bring no joy to the person you love so much if you spew hate in her name. I, I have to agree with her on that. Yeah, I did, do. Did they do her too? Who is that? Who she yeah, said you know that? Yeah. yeah. They, they don't they'll come for you. Yeah. They'll come for they you don't too. Care. Yeah, they told that woman to kill herself and all that. That was that what? was too much. I yeah. just thought that was yeah. mean. I think they went too they, far. That was yeah, really mean. Did. I thought yeah, it was, was really too. Mean. Yeah. I, we got yeah. you, love Beyonce. We yeah. all love Beyonce, yeah. but you We know. love B. Yeah. And that's how people yeah. get hurt too, man. Yeah. It goes too far. Yeah. And yeah, you don't and know what Beyonce was set. thinking. You don't know. Mm-hmm. I mean, you saw yeah. the looks, but you don't know. Yeah, she didn't say right. anything. So She didn't look like she was happy. No, she did not. <laughs> she did not. <laughs> she did. But still, she to did. tell the woman to kill herself? Come on, man. Yeah. 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 Not and, cool. And Yvette, she spoke up, the owner's wife. She spoke up for herself. Yeah, you know, she, she did. Like, I got a man. <laughs> and good. Right. I'm married, yeah. and she said, I don't even think Beyonce would like you guys saying this. Saying yeah. 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 And, and, and I wish I had a beehive, though. Do you think Beyonce should tell a beehive to pull up? She, yes, I do. I do yeah, think okay. that. Yeah. All right. Yeah. yeah. All right. More of the Steve Harvey Morning Show and trending news coming up at 33 after the hour, right after this. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Junior, you are here. Let's oh. hear some sports talk. Oh, my you. gosh. <laughs> we still got Junior? some more basketball. <laughs> Yeah, it's some yeah. more basketball. It's, it what shouldn't have been. 106 <laughs> to 105. Golden State Warrior pulled it off. Oh, my wow. God. I feel for mm. Toronto. They were right there. When you got a team like Golden State down 3-1, to one, you're supposed to go on and finish the deal. And you at home, you're supposed to finish the deal, man. you supposed to finish that. Okay, so you watched the game last night. Yeah. So right. what happened? I mean, I agree with Tommy. Toronto, they supposed to close the it, deal. It was, you know, Klay Thompson hit a big shot with okay. 56 seconds left in the game. Did and that gave them a 106-103 lead. And I'm telling uh-huh. you, that was big. But then it was some... DeMarcus, because we had the game, and you fought, you had a illegal pick that gave the ball back to Toronto. Mm-hmm. But then they threw the, the ball away right after that. So now that's two turnovers under a minute. You can't have that. Because mm. they're Canada. And we're the USA. <laughs> Shut up, fool. <laughs> and did you see Monica sing the singer Monica? Oh, sounded, oh, oh right. yeah. 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 Right. She did, did the national anthem. And if she's well, listening to the show this morning, A32. Oh, because she's going. No, look, Junior. Let her get through what she's going through. Hey. <laughs> He's talking about well, 832 already. The, uh, paper, the ink on the papers aren't even dry yet, But the Junior. order's put in. <laughs> <laughs> That's what you need to understand. The order's in. So when you come out, there's somebody uh-huh. outside. Uh-huh. I'm going to be out at the courthouse. What they say? Uh-huh. <laughs> so what you think now, Tommy? Uh, game six, Oakland, Junior. I still, I'm yeah. still pulling for Toronto. I'm still. Yeah. Man. I, I still I'm think they're going to pull it off. I, they have won. Oh, they won Nobody what two games country. in um, in Golden State. So it's doable. It's doable. Uh, uh, in it's Oakland. doable. Uh-huh. How y'all going uh, against yeah, your you know, own country? Yeah. How are y'all going against your own? How are y'all going against your own country? This is the U.S. Because isn't? we're Rockets fans, and Golden State always beat. Thank you. Beat the Rockets. Oh, thank so we cheer oh. for yeah, Toronto. Yeah, we cheer for Toronto. The East. Whoever's in the East, that's who we cheer for. Anybody. <laughs> It could have been Philadelphia. We don't care. <laughs> Milwaukee. We didn't care. Yeah, we didn't care. No, okay. uh, no. We're going. Uh, I, I think it's. I think it's going to go seven games, though. I really do. At this point, I don't think Kevin Durant coming back. No, he's not. No, he was on crutches. I saw. Yeah. Him. No, he's done. He gave it a good shot, though. No, he no. Really what did. you saw last night was Kevin Durant's last game as as a warrior. You think he so? Oh, I think he gone. Where is he, Where's he go? going? Junior, New York. They say New York. York. They say New York. That's what my husband said. Yeah. They say to New probably York. gonna go probably go to New York, which is which is really good for him. 
Coming up, our last break of the day and some closing remarks that Steve left us with. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. All right, Steve, here we go. Last break of the day. Um, Some parting words for us with your closing remarks, please. All right. Um, I guess um, without thinking about this much, I want to talk to you about life, how fragile it is. And I want to have something to say about, you know what? I'm really not going to get into the whole situation because I, I just be honest with you. There are times, there are actually times when I'm actually sick and tired of talking about it. I am exhausted with the fact that the color of my skin has to come into play in my everyday life, my just day to day. I don't know, I I really can't think of any days realistically where I do not have to consider the color of my skin, the shape of my nose and my lips, wherever I go, the situation I'm in. I very rarely can think of a day that I'm not made aware of it or I have to factor it in. If you're not, a person of color or a minority, you may not even be able to understand what I'm saying. But I'll just give you an example. When riding in the car and being stopped by the police, as me and my buddy Greg Calhoun was doing last year after golf out and coming from Montgomery to Alabama in his car, and we were speeding, and we were supposed to get pulled over. We were speeding. But what I had to do was immediately become aware that I am a black man. Skip your money and your fame. I don't have time to throw that out at you. I got to get and start preparing myself as the officer approaches the car. I must understand without him getting my ID, I'm a black man, just a black man. So I put my hands up on the dashboard And the officer came to the passenger side and said, why is your hands on the dashboard? I said, because I don't want nothing to happen to me. The officer said, while that's acting mighty suspicious, I said, no, it's not. I'm just being safe, officer, if you don't mind. She said, well, I'll need to see ID. I said, my ID happens to be in a pouch in the back seat. I would have to reach. She said, well, go ahead. And I was tense. Because I didn't, I didn't want to be mistaken. When I'm on an elevator and I get on, I am conscious of the fact that me and my guy are the only ones on the elevator. When I go to golf courses, and I oftentimes see that there are hardly any African Americans out here. It's just me and one of maybe the foursome that I'm playing with. And, and, and I, 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 I'm just always aware of it. If you're not that, you don't have to be aware of it. But it's the awareness that becomes draining at times. It's the fact that you got to be the only one on your flow, the only one on the elevator, the only one in the cubicle, the only one in your department, the only one at the meeting, the only one in the cafeteria, the only one on on the trip, the only one... The only one at the hotel at the front desk, the only one, the only one, the only one's kids that's in the recital, the only one's kids that's at the that's on the soccer team, the only one, the only one, the only one, the only one gets to be exhausting at times. This will not change until more people who are not of color can try to empathize or sympathize or generalize or something with us to say, you know what? I don't know how that feels, but I bet that ain't right. Because as I've often said many times, slavery didn't end just because black people got sick of being slaves. We were sick of it, the thought of it, when they put us on them boats. Nobody wanted to ride the boat over here and come be no slave. Nobody was under the belly of them slave ships going, man, this is nice. This is going to be a new opportunity. Nobody. 
So I want to wake up and just see what it feels like to just go about my day without having to calculate my race, without to have to calculate the color of my skin. To watch other people get paid a certain amount of money and then you don't get paid a certain amount of money with the same type of ratings and then you got you got to incorporate something else again. Now I've been very blessed with the life that I have and I would not trade mine for anything. With all this sick and tired of being sick and tired, I also, what makes this all so tolerable for me is my love of who I am. My love of our power to overcome, our power to maintain in the struggle, our power to still be something when we were brought here to simply be nothing. So for us to have accomplished what we've accomplished, I'm grateful and awful proud of that. So I guess my pride just keeps me going on. I hope that God will continue to let whatever light that I can let shine through my existence to inspire someone else to overcome when it look like you ain't gonna make it. Because that's exactly what I've done by the grace of God. I have overcome against all the odds even when they said I wasn't gonna make it. And even though I'm tired of being tired, I wouldn't trade places and be nothing else no how because in this struggle has taught me so many items of strength. I've learned so much about myself. My soul is strong. My spirit is strong. And I thank God for that. So y'all yeah. have a great weekend. Man. <laughs> For all Steve Harvey contests, no purchase necessary, void where prohibited. Participants must be legal U.S. residents at least 18 years old unless otherwise stated. For complete contest rules, visit steveharveyfm.com. You're listening to the Steve Harvey Morning Show. 